I will be replicating a um, poster session which uh, took place on Dubrovnik Cognitive Science Conference at 2022 in May. Uh, the poster uh, is about dopamine and how dopamine mediates movement, so the relation between dopamine and basal ganglia. Dopamine is secreted from two deeply located brain structures ventral tegmental area and substantia nigra, and these two structure, structures virtually enervate the whole brain with dopamine. I will, we will be focusing on connection between substantia nigra and basal ganglia. Uh, basal ganglia is a collection of deeply located brain nuclei, which um, has been initially associated with movement disorders like Parkinson's disease, but subsequently has been related to also cognitive and associative processes. Uh, you see here uh, uh, organization of basal ganglia, uh, or rather a part of the basal ganglia, uh, a striatum in primates. A striatum is divided to caudate nuclei, to putamen and to nucleus accumbens. These three structures together uh, create a, a complex known as striatum, uh, whereas in rodents uh, the um, nucleus accumbens is called ventral striatum, the caudate nuclei is called the dorsomedial striatum, and the putamen is called dorsolateral striatum. The striatum is divided to sensory motor, associative, and uh, limbic striatum. Sensory motor striatum is connected with motor cortex, sensory motor cortex, uh, predorsal premotor cortex, so uh, regions associated with uh, movement of particular parts of the body. So uh, one could argue that uh, praxis are. Um, movements which would be mediated by sensory motor striatum. This is a valid argument. Uh, actually, one person uh, who works on uh, the striatum, Ullman, he argues that uh, Broca area uh, is a extension of basal ganglia, and rather our substantia nigra, and aggregates sensory motor part of the striatum with dopaminergic inputs. Uh, the very same part uh, is uh, enervated by uh, motor, premotor, and somatosensory cortices. Uh, and striatum itself um, sends projection to the thalamus, respective parts of this thalamus, so let's say sensory motor thalamus. Uh, these projections are inhibitory, so when the overall activity of the sensory motor striatum is uh, higher uh, when the, this part is excited, then it sends inhibitory uh, connections to the thalamus and the thalamus cannot in turn inhibit the respective parts of the neocortex, uh, which as a result um, makes them excited and perform movements. The associative part of the striatum is enervated by dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and uh, dorsomedial substantia nigra. Uh, it also connects the respective parts of the thalamus creating a loop and similarly limbic part of the striatum uh, is uh, enervated by ventral tegmental area and from the uh, most evolutionally recent parts of the brain, namely orbital frontal cortex or in general um, ventral medial prefrontal cortex. Uh, and these structures, um, this limbic part of the striatum also uh, connects to the respective parts of the thalamus. And so this is basically a loop and the dopamine from uh, substantia nigra and from ventral tegmental area to some extent uh, fuels the activity of the striatum. Uh, but um, how it fuels it? Uh, so the question is, the, the observation is that dopaminergic neurons can operate in two different uh, modes uh, of activity, tonic firing and phallic firing. Tonic firing is a slow firing, like tech, 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 like slow, repetitive firing, 
whereas phasic firing is a burst phasic activity which releases a lot of dopamine in a very short period of time. So these are two main um, ways how uh, dopaminergic neurons work. Uh, and subsequently we have two uh, dopaminergic uh, receptors uh, in the striatal uh, neurons, D1 dopaminergic receptor and D2 dopaminergic receptor. D1 is excitatory, D2 is inhibitory. D1 reacts to great uh, concentration of dopamine in the synaptic cleft, whereas D2 is um, sensitive to low uh, concentration of dopamine. So when burst firing occurs, this uh, releasing of great amount of dopamine activates D1 receptor which is excitatory but when the tonic firing uh, is taking place this so low con uh, concentration of dopamine uh, makes the D2 receptors activated. D1 receptors and D2 receptors are expressed in different neurons. These receptors are called medium spine neurons, so MSN, uh, and uh, some of these neurons express D1 receptors, other express D2 receptors. To the extent of my knowledge, there is no neuron expressing both of these receptors. Great concentration of D1 receptors is here in the limbic regions. There is virtually no um, D2 expressing medium spiny neurons there, whereas the, in the rest of the um, striatum, uh, D1 and D2 receptors uh, are present together. Okay, so dopaminergic neurons seems to create a gradient uh, from substantia nigra to ventral tegmental area. And this gradient has been associated with either value or salience. Like virtually dopamine is dopamine is associated with feeling of pleasure uh, in a kind of common sense way, but uh, this picture is a way to simplify it. The activity of dopamine is may, way more uh, sophisticated. Um, it seems that neurons from substantia nigra and from ventral tegmental area uh, create uh, two separate networks of activity uh, projecting to the higher parts of the brain, like to the striatal level of brain processing, uh, or striatal level of information processing, and neocortical level of information processing. And recall that the respective parts of the striatum is connected with respective parts of the neocortex and respective parts of the thalamus and this creates a loop, sensory motor processing loop, associative processing loop and limbic processing loop. This makes perfect sense that the dopaminergic neurons intervene, uh, makes interventions uh, terminate in all parts of this hierarchy uh, on different parts like uh, at the level of striatum and at the level of uh, neocortex. This is totally unknown for me how the activity of this either substantia nigra or ventral tegmental area is actually uh, initiated. This is some sort of uh, conclusion here uh, or rather a set of random thoughts. Uh, dopamine activity is needed for initiation of movement. Uh, this is quite important here that uh, given the level of dopamine in the striatum, uh, one can predict in the mouse brain, one can predict that uh, how vigorous uh, a movement will be and how, is a, how big is a chance for initiating a movement. This initiation of movement uh, is also something which is relevant for habitual actions. When we talk about habits, it is not about the activity itself, about the movement itself that is being habitual, but the fact of initiating 
of a given activity is habitual. So when you find yourself in the given circumstances, you automatically start doing something. Uh, and well, like frankly, uh, the uh, conditions like obsessive compulsive disorders uh, or PTSD are also, or Tourette syndrome, uh, are also associated with activity of basal ganglia and imbalance uh, in this activity. So uh, you can think of habitual actions which are actions automatically elicited. D1 expressing medium spiny neurons in anterior dorsolateral striatum. Uh, bear in mind that dorsolateral striatum is an equivalent of primate putamen and dorsomedial striatum is an equivalent of caudate nuclei in primates. So D1 medium spiny neurons in anterior dorsolateral striatum is responsible, activity of these neurons uh, is associated with uh, learning new instrumental actions uh, whereas D2, uh, activity of uh, medium spiny neurons expressing D2, a dopaminergic receptor, um, oppose this learning and, and promote habitual action expressions. So actions which are already learned um, habitually and uh, when you find yourself in the circumstances in which you can repeat all the decisions or make new decisions, when you repeat all decisions, it seems that D2 expressing medium spiny neurons in anterior portion of your uh, putamen, if we translate the lateral striatum equivalently to the putamen, um, would be uh, responsible for expressing this habitual action. This is a study uh, not directly related to basal ganglia, but related rather to uh, dopamine as general. That belief update understood as encoding an important uh, meaningful information is associated with uh, dopaminergic activity measured by uh, PET activity on, in the human brain. Yeah, I do not really understand this study yet, cannot really ground it in a broader picture, but it's important to realize that dopamine is also related to encoding of new information. And this is actually what uh, the next point here is about, that dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra, this is a study by uh, Kaminski in, uh, on human participants who underwent the brain surgery given their epileptic conditions. So it was possible to collect uh, information about activity of a single cell in their middle temporal lobe and putative dopaminergic neurons uh, in the midbrain. Uh, people uh, who go for that kind of procedure have no other option, like their epilepsy uh, cannot be treated in any different way, so the skull has to be opened and the activity of brain has to be collected for a prolonged period of time in order to pinpoint the sources of these epileptic seizures and then based on these sources try to uh, mitigate these seizures. So this creates an opportunity to, very rare opportunity, to observe activity of single cells in human brain and how uh, human brain works when faced with any kind of cognitive tasks that a researcher can think of. In this particular case, the images had been uh, presented to participants, a um, series of uh, different photos and uh, in subsequent uh, experiments, some of these photos have been repeatedly shown to participants, uh, have been shown again to participants, other uh, were totally new. Uh, and based, of, uh, based of on this presentation, the researchers were able to um, analyze activity of the brain for pictures which had been shown twice 
but during the second presentation has not been recognized as being previously um, perceived. So it's what happened during the first presentation which prevent for encoding the information about this presentation taking place so that during the second presentation this person didn't uh, recall that already seen this picture and uh, classified it as a new one. And apparently the putative dopaminergic activity here uh, was a key, like uh, they were collecting activity from middle temporal lobe, from hippocampus and from um, putative dopaminergic cells in the substantia nigra. Uh, putative because they were, there, were, there is no way to really pinpoint whether these particular cells into which the researchers got access to were dopaminergic or no, maybe there were interneurons or something but presumably there were dopaminergic neurons. So during the presentation, the presented stimuli uh, was processed by the middle temporal lobe around 400 milliseconds after the presentation and peak of activity in the substantia nigra has been observed around 600 milliseconds after the presentation. But when uh, the 600 millisecond peak of activity in the SN has not been observed, then in these cases the picture which has been subsequently presented uh, during the second presentation uh, was uh, inaccurately uh, classified as a new one. Uh, so this makes a, a prediction that activity of the substantia nigra is important for encoding of declarative knowledge in the hippocampus. And this would actually resonate with mouse study uh, in a study from Donegal laboratory in which they observed that uh, dopaminergic activity from locus corellus, like the locus corellus is around the, uh, just next to ventral tegmental area and substantia nigra. And this is norepinephrenic structure. Um, noradrenaline and norepinephrine are the same name for the uh, given for the same chemical. Anyway, norepinephrine is synthesized from dopamine. So we have to have dopamine in a neuron. Neuron translates this dopamine into norepinephrine. And norepinephrinergic neurons operate similarly as dopaminergic neurons in this phasic and tonic activity. <coughs> Uh, and in mouse, in mice, activity uh, connection from locus corellus to the hippocampus is not only norepinephrenic connection but also dopaminergic connection. So there is dopamine, uh, dopamine secreted from uh, locus corellus. We do not know whether this is the case in human as well, or maybe. In humans, there is this substantia nigra connection to the hippocampus, which is also not really recognized in the field. Uh, however, these two research point to the importance of dopamine into in creating declarative knowledge in the hippocampus, uh, in encoding declarative memories in the hippocampus. Okay, so basically uh, that will be uh, everything now. Uh, this was a presentation, uh, more or less, which I gave uh, during the conference. Uh, I hope that uh, you will get anything uh, interesting from this. Uh, have a lovely day. Cheers. Bye.